Is the Barbie movie introspective? Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's video, we're going to review the Barbie movie, but we're gonna review it through the lens of introspection. So I'm not a movie critic. I don't care if it was a good movie, bad movie, cinematography, don't care. What I care about is what can we learn from the Barbie movie? People wanted me to see it because I review philosophy, we pop culture, we talk about the levels, which is my rating system of introspection. And this is like a perfect example of pop culture expressing existential dread, introspection, identity. What does it mean to be a consciousness? Before I jump into the introspection part, I do wanna say that I really enjoyed the film and that was the first time I had been to a theater in a very long time. So it was a good kind of comeback to the theater, I think. It was really colorful and beautiful and the fashion was great and the acting was great and the cast was great. I have no complaints. The humor was funny. Everything was basically what I thought it would be. I will say the first 30 minutes made me like a little worried and then I just got better as it went on. So. I will say in that way, it was like a fun movie. I don't know how many times I'll probably watch this movie in my lifetime, but you know, if a gaggle of girls got around and wanted to watch it again, I would watch it again. So with that said, I did enjoy the film for, you know, the film's sake. In terms of introspection, I will say it was a unique experience to watch it as a viewer and then to see the characters watch themselves through the lens of their struggles. So I'm a girl, I was born a girl. I've always had a struggle with being a girl. I grew up in a family of eight boys and two girls. I'm the third oldest and a lot fell on my shoulders. I'm the first biological child of my father and there was a lot of responsibility that came with that. And to this day, I get a lot of the blame if my siblings act out of turn. And I think a lot of parental parentification, parentification happens to older, older siblings. And it definitely happened to me. I'm not too angry about it. I understand in an immigrant household, coming to the States, raising kids in a religious family, it's understandable that they'd be upset that one of the oldest ended up becoming queer, atheist, leaving the house, and ended up becoming a little bit of a self-empowered feminist, right? I understand the frustrations with that. I can understand how this movie sort of re was relatable to so many women who had my similar story. My story is not that unique. Growing up in an immigrant home, feeling a cross between a tomboy and a girl, feeling like I have a lot of responsibilities as one of the oldest girls, feeling like I want to be immodest when I grew up, you know, trained to be modest, wanting to be a feminist when I grew up in a sort of patriarchal home, wanting something different for myself from a job or how I dressed or what I did and then actually accomplishing it. The movie was pretty relatable to a lot of us. Funny enough, it was relatable to also conservative women. I actually watched Brett Cooper on YouTube who's actually pretty conservative, but she's, you know, kind of balanced. She's got a good vibe to her. She's younger than I am, obviously, and she's had an interesting journey. She even loved the Barbie movie. And so I think there's something to be said about that universal experience of a girl crosses political balance. Obviously the film was made to tug at those nostalgia heartstrings, right? It was made to make you remember your childhood. And if you grew up with Barbie like I did, even hand-me-downs, right? Cause my mom couldn't afford to get me brand new Barbies every time. I was lucky I had older cousins who could give me theirs. You still grew up with Barbie and you still grew up admiring Barbie, liking her body, liking her feet, liking her shoes, liking her clothes. And there's something to be said about the challenge you're facing as a child, the introspective challenge you're facing to ask yourself, do I want to grow up to be Barbie or do I want to grow up to be someone else? Maybe Sailor Moon, since those were the two options I had. Both female figures who do accentuate sort of the female form, the typical woman, the skinny girl, the feminine but tough. Like the, it's interesting, the similar expectations between even anime and Barbie. But anyways, that's for another video. In terms of introspection, I think it's important that we ourselves as women recognize that we're born into bubbles, just like the movie starts off with. The movie literally starts off with Barbie in her own little bubble. And the moment they said bubble, of course I looked at my partner and I was like, bubble, bubble. Bubbles become my word on the internet because I really think we are unaware, even though we say it, even though it's in our movies, we are sort of in denial that we're born into bubbles, all of us, and then we choose to live in bubbles. So I live in a bubble where I can be carefree and I can be who I want and I can have the job I want and I don't follow the expectation of the script. I now follow the expectation of my values, 
which tells me that my gender matters less and less every year I age. So this movie reminded me that I was a girl and I needed to be introspective in relation to being a girl. But what happens when you want to be introspect introspective outside of that? I think as the movie progresses, Barbie's given that opportunity to sort of think of herself other than as Barbie, which is not exactly other than being a girl, but it's other than being what she was born as. And I think that's really important. It's just the beginning stages of her introspection journey. It's really, really fresh. So I don't have the expectation for the film and I absolutely didn't have the expectation that it would go very deep, but it's really important that we start at the beginning anyways, because everyone, when they start off on their introspection journey, start off very simply, usually thinking the world is one way, only to discover it's another. And then as you continue questioning, you realize like, so, oh, it's not even like this. And oh, it's not even like this. And it's not even like this until you keep digging and digging and digging and realizing that most of the world we know is a construct. Most of the rules we create are a construct, mostly on fear or power. Most of the rules we create are just because like, eh, good enough. So Barbie didn't get the opportunity to be more introspective. So again, if I was rating Barbie on my level scale, she'd be like a two, a two B, maybe a questioning Maybe she's like a three for like a moment. And if you guys want to know what the levels mean, links down below in the description. But you know, maybe she's like a three, but not really. She's just like a two who realizes like, oh shoot, the thing I think was real, not real, is real to an extent. Everything we believe becomes sort of real because we believe it hard enough. Which is why it's so devastating when we find out it's not literally always real. It's kind of why it's so painful to leave religion because even though most of us should probably be more agnostic than atheist because we really don't know, what we can know is that our religions are probably man-made and a construct of our own belief. So it's really difficult when you're raised in a religion like I was only to discover like, oop, maybe they don't have the universal answers for everybody. That's really devastating. And it can feel like, why don't I just give up? If this is happening to me, I should give up. Barbie was going through a different journey of introspection versus Ken, who was going through a true identity with the self. Barbie had more of an extra existential, um, extrospective journey, right? And, and Ken had more of an existential introspection journey, I would argue that Ken had more of an introspection journey because he had to ask himself, who am I without Barbie? And Barbie had to ask herself, who am I without this, without the idea of the world that I created? So both aren't even on the same sort of introspection, extrospe ex extrospection journey. It's just very different. So truly, I think this identifies like two different ways to experience looking within and looking at the world and reflecting within. Remember that we start with ourselves. Who am I? Barbie, Ken. Who am I in relation to my atmosphere? Barbie in relation to her idea of how she's changed the real world. And Ken in relation to who he is next to Barbie. And then they go back to themselves. So Ken tries to find out who he is through the patriarchy. And Barbie tries to figure out who she is by helping somebody else. Throughout their journeys, both realize that they have the wrong idea of themselves mixed in with sort of the right idea of themselves. Ken did deserve better. And I am sorry I ever doubted Ryan Gosling as Ken because he killed it. It was so good. I loved it so much. But Ken did know he was being neglected. And Barbie knew she was neglecting him. It was just hard to admit, right? They had to really take pause and be willing to admit, I've been doing it wrong. And Barbie, she had to really have that inner, like, she had to have a moment of really accepting that this make-believe Barbie world that had been so perfect for her wasn't universally perfect for everyone else. You know, the most, I think, ironic part of the whole film was sort of that realization, at least to me, that you can't create a world that's good for everybody. You know, gun to my head, if somebody asked me, do I want to live in the real world or Barbie world? I'd want to live in Barbie world with this consciousness. I wouldn't want to live in the real world. It's exhausting. The world exhausts me. <laughs> the world is complicated and nuanced and exhausting, and people are always just creating trouble for themselves. But in the Barbie world, I would also get exhausted. I can't be fully myself. I can't enjoy the different nuances of existence. It's not as fulfilling. And so where do people go who are a little bit more individualistic? Do they go to the real world? Do they go to Barbie land? Or do they hop in between the bubbles, right? So even though the movie, shallow as it was, was a really good beginning stepping into the journey of introspection. So I really wanna give it props in that way because a lot of people haven't even started to ask themselves the questions that Ken and Barbie had to ask themselves. If you're looking at the divorce rate, 
the dating statistics right now, if you're looking at the way people are cohabitating or making friends, it's obvious that people are lacking introspection and they're lacking extrospection. They're lacking a conversation with themselves. And maybe this movie, though silly, could be a beginning step to asking themselves those questions. So I liked it in general for that reason, especially. And I know you guys wanted me to watch it because this channel is open to any tool possible for the individual to reach that successful sense of joy. And so if this movie is going to do it, great. I know a lot of people were sort of amused at Mattel's influence in the film, obviously Mattel being the company that made Barbie. And in the film, Will Ferrell plays like one of the execs, the top guy who sort of represents the company, but obviously isn't the real guys who do Mattel. And so it's kind of like awkward and weird. And they acknowledge that they're a company who want to make money. And so in that way, they're kind of like two A's who are just there and focus on their own little thing. Or maybe they're even two B's, who knows, but they're an introspection level, I guess, enough to sort of explain themselves in the film in a way that makes the audience feel like, ah, the capitalists know that they're evil and they don't really care about women and they just care about the money. But who cares about them? Why do we even care as an audience? What's some Barbie company who just wants to make money off of? Like, what do we care if they know what they're doing? Everybody knows what they're doing. We're all just in cognitive dissonance about it. We all know when we're hurting ourselves, we can feel the pain. We all know when companies just want money, we can see it in their bank accounts. So I think it's a little silly to care that Mattel was trying to make itself more lovable through the film. Like, it's like Disney, always trying to be self-aware, but like Disney's Disney, Mattel's Mattel. So I, I don't care about that point, but I just thought I would mention it. I thought it was funny and humorous and I appreciated that the film broke the fourth wall a lot by saying, you know, Margot Robbie is probably not the best example if we're fighting the standard of beauty because she's literally gorgeous. And at the same time, who cares? There is a standard of beauty, and I think we all know it. And frankly, those of us who don't always look conventional or can't even pass if we wanted to, it's not going to help us at the end of the day for Margot Robbie to be aware. And it doesn't even matter because we are more than our looks, right? We're more than the standard of beauty, unless we're not. Because every girl at the movie theater that night was wearing pink. When I went to the bathroom after the movie, every girl was in the mirror putting their makeup back on. I like makeup as much as the next girl. I like pink as much as the next girl but I don't think we can escape wanting to feel pretty. And sometimes that means appealing to the typical, the expected, the standard. And sometimes that means owning your weird and your sense of beauty. I don't think the Barbie movie is groundbreaking. I think it's a lot of fun though. And I think it's a good stepping stone into the journey of introspection. So watch the movie and enjoy it. It reached my expectation of good enough. And I think it is good enough. Those are my thoughts on the Barbie movie. If you guys have any thoughts of your own, please let me know in the sections down below. If you guys are interested, I'm going to create an event on my Discord, which helps support this channel if you guys are interested in my work and would like to see more of it. Links down below for the Patreon to join the Discord. I'll host an event to discuss this further because I know some people in my Discord have pretty passionate opinions about the Barbie movie and I would love to hear from them. So if you guys would like to join, links down below for that information. I'll make sure to set the event in August so you'll have time to watch the movie before then. And yeah. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking yeah i'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool